in the next section, we're going to be looking at how veterinary technicians might use measurement um, and mathematics. There is a household system of measuring that lacks standardization. Um, it's not accurate enough for measuring medicine. So when we have our measuring cups and teaspoons, tablespoons that we use to make cakes with, those are not accurate enough for us to use to dispense medication. We have the metric system that was developed in the 18th century that does have standardized measures and weights. And most European countries use the metric system because it's based on factors of 10. And so the prefixes denotes the increases or decreases of the basic unit of measure. So like the meter, the liter, and the gram, we can put prefixes in front of those to denote how many liters or grams that we are speaking of. The apothecary system is a system of liquid units of measure and it's mainly used by pharmacists. In the household system we accept approximation for the dose that's acceptable. We use systems of weights and measures that are based on the pound and the pound containing 16 fluid ounces. Again, the system lacks standardization but is calibrated in units that most people are familiar with such as the teaspoon in the cup. The drop tablespoon and teaspoon are the only household measures still used by pharmacists. In the apothecary system, dealing with liquid measure, and it's used by pharmacists, is also called the common system. And it was derived from the British apothecary system of measure. The units are the minimum, which is a liquid value of a drop of water from a standard medicine dropper. 60 minims is one fluid dram and a grain is the basic unit of weight measurement. In the metric system, again it's based on factors of 10 and the base units are the meter for length, the liter for volume, and the gram for a weight. The prefixes are micro, which means one millionth of a unit. Milli means one thousandth of a unit. Centi is one hundredth of a unit. And kilo means one thousand. We're going to work on converting from one unit to another within the same system. So we will change metric to metric. We will change uh, English to English. And so we're going to be using conversion factors. And I gave you um, a paper that might be helpful. And then there are, are several charts in the chapter 
that will be helpful as well. We're going to be converting from larger to smaller units and when you do you multiply because if you have a large unit you have to have more small units to make it equal so it's a multiplication and if you're taking a small to a large you would have fewer units therefore you divide If we're working within the metric system, we're going to use dimensional analysis or unit calculation. So you must know the metric equivalents called the conversion factors. And the conversion factors are used to change between units and always have a value of 1. So we cancel units to achieve answers in desired units of measure. And the desired unit of measure should be on top of the conversion factor. And then at the end you always validate your answer. So you look at it to make sure that it is reasonable. Now the shortcut method is simply to move the decimal in the direction that you need to go. So if you're changing a large, like a kilogram to a gram, you're going to move the decimal three places to the right. So one kilogram is 1,000 grams. If you're changing a gram to a kilogram, you're going to move the decimal three places to the left. So one gram is 1,000 that w that's decimal zero zero one of a kilogram. Now a liter changed to a milliliter. We move the decimal three places to the right. So one liter is a thousand milliliters. If we change a milliliter to a liter, we move the decimal to the left because we're t changing small to large. So one milliliter is one thousandth of a liter. That's decimal zero zero one. So remember, when converting from large units to small, the quantity gets larger. So you multiply. When converting from small to large, the quantity gets smaller. So you divide. Now if we're converting in the apothecary system using dimensional analysis method, we determine the apothecary equivalents. So we have to create a conversion factor. So to determine what format to write the conversion factor in, we set up the conversion in an equation and then perform the calculation. <coughs> when we're converting within the household system, we determine the household equivalents. We create a common conversion factor we determine what format to write the conversion factor in and then we set up the conversions in an equation. We perform the calculation and then we make sure the correct answer is determined by proving the work. Sometimes we want to change a metric measure into a household measure. So we have to use the dimensional analysis method. So we determine the conversion factor between the two systems. So look in the chart, determine what format to write the conversion factor, set up the conversions in an equation, perform the calculation, and then make sure that you check for a reasonable answer. 
If we are changing metric to apothecary, at times you may need to make conversions between those two systems. So we need a relationship between the two systems to serve as a bridge. So the bridges are found in Table 6.6 in your textbook. A conversion factor is a number used within either multiplication or division to change a measurement from one unit of measurement to its equivalent in another unit of measure. In Fahrenheit system, water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees. In Celsius, water freezes at zero degrees and boils at 100 degrees. So if you are looking to change Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit, we have formulas that you can use to make that substitution. In dose calculations, you must know correct amount of drug to administer to the patient. It must be in the same system of measurement, and the weight has to be changed into metric. So if you know the weight in pounds, you will divide it by 2.2 to get kilograms. So you remember that drugs can be measured in micrograms, milligrams, grams, grains, milliliters, liters, or units. Units are used when giving um, doses, insulin doses. Remember that drugs can be dispensed either by tablets milliliters or liters, which are liquid, or capsules. Solutions are mixtures of substances, not chemically combined with each other. The dissolving substance of a solution is referred to as the solvent. It's the liquid. It's what dissolves the solute. The solute is the substance that is dissolved. It's the solid or the particles that are dissolved. Substances that form solutions are called miscible. And substances that do not form solutions are called immiscible. When we work with solutions, we're concerned about the concentration. So we need to know the amount of solute dissolved in the solvent. So concentrations may be in, expressed as parts, weight per volume, volume per volume, or weight per weight. So usually it's reported out as percents or a percent solution. So remember that a percent is the parts per total times 100. So in working with solutions, we look at the parts. That'll be parts per million means one milligram of solute in a kilogram or liter of solvent. So that would be a one to one thousand ratio. If you're looking at liquid and liquid, the percent concentration is the volume per one hundred volumes of the total mixture, or one milliliter 
to 100 milliliters. Solids and solids. The percent of concentration is the weight per 100 weights of total mixture. So 60 milligrams per 100 milligrams. And then solids and liquid is the percent concentration is the weight in grams per 100 volume parts in milliliters. Pure drugs are substances that are 100% pure. Stock solution is a relatively concentrated solution from which more dilute solutions are made. The ratio proportion method is one method of determining the amount of pure drug needed to make a solution. So you take the amount of drug divided by the amount of finished solution and that gives you the percent of finished solution over 100 based on a pure drug. So remember that the amount of drug used to, prevent a solu to prepare a solution is added to the total volume of the solvent. So another way to determine volume V sub S is the volume of the beginning or the stock solution. C sub S is the concentration of the beginning or stock solution. And V sub D is the volume of the final solution. And C sub D is the concentration of the final solution. So we can set up an equation saying the volume of the stock times the concentration of the stock is equal to the volume of the final times the concentration of the final. Drug concentrations are sometimes listed in percents, sometimes in parts per total, The front of the vial specifies the concentration. For example, 2% lidocaine. We use X grams over 100 milliliters to determine the dose. Reconstitution problems. Drug is in powder form because it's not stable when suspended in solution. So such a drug must be reconstituted, so liquid must be added to it. The label should state how much liquid's to be added, and the powder may add to the total final volume of the liquid being reconstituted. So you label a reconstituted drug with the date prepared, the concentration, and your initials. Again, you label a reconstituted drug with the date prepared, the concentration, and your initials.